everyone, uh, this is Talking Twash with Mike and Nikki. So, yeah, I guess in this go. episode we're going to talk about uh, Halloween and Halloween spoops. Yes. And uh, uh, this game. We're talking about last year or this year or both? Um. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I know we, uh, we did the we did the throwback Thursday for the the Countess, correct? Yeah, we did. All right. So, for anybody wondering about that particular uh, the weeping Countess skeleton, uh, not a puppet, it's a statue. What do you call that decoration? Um, we did a Halloween thing last year. Uh, loosely trash goblins based and it was a <clears throat> during the party first of all that party was freaking amazing because Nikki's mom came by and basically ran the backyard and we had food and a bonfire and uh, my sister's boyfriend Sam came and he did a taco bar uh, like a, a griddle top taco bar and it was like catered back there it was crazy and then your mom brought those tabletops from the bar and we had little gazebo setups and it was nuts um but inside downstairs we had a little gaming area uh we had you know video games for people to play but i made a um it was like a party game so i made this little board where you can move around these colored pieces based on which cult you were a part of uh so anybody that came in got assigned a cult and each cult had their own sort of um goals for the night and it was just a social game so like you would be able to um at some point throw post-it notes at people and that was called giving them a curse and they had to figure out how to deal with what was on the curse but you got to write your own so for instance uh somebody handed one over that said you must speak in rhyme only until somebody breaks the curse so that was the sort of social fun part of it but the the other the other part of this game is that there were three different cults and each one had their own specific oh what did i call it was it like their their totem or something this their each individual statue yeah yeah so we had we had the the i think it was the council of horns which was the skulls upstairs and so they were a cult that was dedicated to like naturey druidy stuff and then we had a cult outside that was the uh, the one who knocks, I think it was. Yeah, and it was, yeah, yeah. And, and that was like the creepy Cthulhu extraplanar cult. And then we had the Weeping Countess herself, which was like the emo, spoopy, vampire-y, whatever cult. So I'm not going to reveal the entire game because it would be a cool surprise if anybody ever actually shows up to play it. But at one point, we had people in the basement, like 10 people, um, chanting <laughs> this creepy chant that I made specifically for the Countess. And we'll put up that video, but it was like really dark by candlelight and they were chanting written stuff on their phone. Um, and it was one of the coolest things that I had ever, I had ever been a part of, especially since it was a small enclosed area and we hadn't covered our walls downstairs yet. So it was like, you know, the acoustics were ricocheting off of our messed up falling apart concrete walls. And, uh, it was legit creepy. Like, my balls tingled a little bit. It was really freaked out. I really regret that, num first of all, I regret that we did not ask, like, Ashley and Jesse to do this podcast with us. Oh, um, yeah. As people, like, they're my, they're friends of mine from Georgia that, uh, they're like, they were my, they started off as my jujitsu coaches. They're now my friends. Um, they're a bit younger than me and Mike. Um, and Jesse grew up in a very religious household, so he he not been allowed to do anything with fantasy or sci-fi until he was like till like a few years ago, basically. Yeah. Um, and so for them to have been brought into that atmosphere and to play that game was pretty pretty stellar. They were the. Oh. The responses were pretty excellent. <laughs> yeah, Jesse got way into it, too. I didn't know how much he was going to engage, but I knew he liked to play Dungeons and & Dragons and stuff with you, so I knew that he'd, you know, he'd sort of poke in a little bit. But, man, so at, at, at the rhyming thing, actually, so I should say that I was the one that was, like, running the game. I was being, like, the game master, not actively participating. But I guess I was technically playing because I was helping people out. And Jesse figured that out, and he gave me all these curses that stopped me from giving help to other players like a dick and it was really genius um 
But yeah, he did got, you did you got keep any of those engaged. curses? Oh yeah, I have them all over the place. Okay, like I feel like we should make to go with this podcast release episode. We should make just a little post some of the curses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they were great. Yeah, yeah. People were coming up with the the best the best ideas. Like I I started the game and then the game just like took off on its own and did its own thing. It was fantastic. So uh, to contextualize a little bit, part of the reason that we were um, doing this is because last year around Halloween was like the one year anniversary of us buying the house. So oh, we hadn't today, the first. Today's the first, our two year anniversary. It is. It is. Oh my god! It is. It's today. Hey! <laughs> Two years of Trash Goblins HQ. I just hey, realized yeah, that. HQ is two years old today. Woo! Um, yeah, we, well, we didn't, the first Halloween, it was deep into COVID, so we didn't get to do anything. Like, I think we may have put stuff out. I, I believe that I put stuff out, but, like, nobody even came to the door. Like, nobody was trick yeah. treating. No. It was so sad because we wanted to do a housewarming. Because, you know, Halloween is our time to shine. It's the holiday where we get to be the the weirdos with the weirdos with the beardos or whatever you want to say so yeah. it's it was the f- it was super disappointing to not be able to introduce ourselves immediately to our neighborhood that way um i still feel a way about it and i still feel like i would sad that i haven't gotten to do a thing to bring in the neighbors so this yeah. was kind of the first shot at doing that and being able to be like hey neighbors we here hello and uh, and also just like invite our family and friends into our house and into a- HQ and to s- get sort of I guess put a I don't know like a a marker on like this is what you can expect this is what this place is and this Absolutely. is what you can expect when you come here Absolutely and if you get invited to a thing here this is what it's gonna be like um, but. We were still kind of in the process of getting settled in because my dad had just been rewiring all the electric in the house. Actually, no, that was before he started that. That was wasn't before it? that, yeah. But it was after the draining tile, the drain tile. God. So our our house was under construction for a the majority of the first year. The basement, anyway, which was Mike's workspace. So a lot of our stuff had been like he'd been kind of working out of the garage. And it was kind of a disaster. So when you, I literally have a video. I will post it. I have a video of my mom, like, anxiously and insanely oh, yeah. trying to clean our basement that had just undergone construction and trying to, like, you know, we had floors under floors under floors under floors. The house was built in the 1920s. And there are many levels of floors. And then they, you know, had deconstructed some of them to put in drain tile to stop leaking problems and stuff and she's desperately trying to like scrub these hundred year old floors yep under the floors under the floors <laughs> under a pile of dust from construction in the basement to try to like get all of the dust gone before I'll, this party and i was like mom you are adorable oh, dude. but my god i will tell you right now the part where i realized she was like going full whole hog into it it's when she cleaned our ancient slop sink oh yeah we're like we're just gonna get a new slop sink this thing was busted it It was was so gross disgusting so i'm like yeah we'll just get a new one this lady rolled up on it with like the powers of 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 you know old slavic lady yeah Yeah. and she wrecked it it's not like perfect but oh my god it is it is a usable slop sink. She got, like, all the crud out of it. I'm like, lady, you're nuts, but thank you so much. I literally thought she was crazy trying to clean that thing. Yeah. And when she was done, it was, like, beaming white. I'm like, only an Eastern European can do yeah. that shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I hope she doesn't see it right now because it's covered in, like, dye and latex. <laughs> I thought about she's that. Gonna, she's going <laughs> to scream. You're not invited this year, lady. Especially after C2E2 with all of my Mondo crap. I was like, oh my god, my mom's... Between that and the possum, she's never going to set foot in our basement again. Yep. Oh, did I tell you that there's there's, uh, Mondo Gecko butt prints on my car still? (laughs) (laughs) There's little green, gluey butt prints on my car. Is the toilet okay now? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I tried so hard to keep the alcohol swaps in there. Yeah, yeah. No, everything's Uh, fine. It was... uh, yeah, I don't know that we told that story, but it was really good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> quick aside, uh, I, you know, I obviously went as Mondo Gecko this year. This year I cut my shorts shorter 
mistake. <laughs> that was a mistake. First of all, it meant I had to paint more of my body and do more prosthetics on more of my body. Yeah. It looked much cuter. But like what I had not considered is that because I was not careful when applying things to my bootay because I can't. <laughs> like I can't see my own bootay and right. I didn't have help. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do the best I can. Let's slap this shit on here and get on the, like, get on the road. And like, so I had, apart from just the paint, you know, I had prosade and paint and like then I try, you know, I tried to seal it. It didn't work. But then also you're sweating all day. So things are kind of coming yeah. undone and those prosthetics turned into weirdness. It was terrible. And so every time I sat on anything, it was like a combination of sticky prosade and which is like alcohol. You have to use alcohol to get that stuff off. It took me weeks <laughs> to get my Mondo make off weeks to get it off my legs. Yeah. Um, so I had the sticky stuff caked with the green color on everything. But the first place I stuck to was toilet seats. I stuck yep. to every toilet seat at C2E2. I felt so bad, but also it was, it was kind of hilarious. It's too damn funny. It's funny because, like, you sat in the front seat of my car for the most part, and that has those little seat covers. So it didn't. Re- I didn't really notice it had my front seats at all but at one point you sat in the back seat and that's where the little booty print is and I'm like oh yeah I forgot yeah because the fr- when I was in the front seat it was still pretty fresh it hadn't been all like melted that's off true. by by sweat and whatever and sitting on things all day that's true it was yeah that was I have really I've also very good pictures of me afterwards trying to clean everything off of myself <laughs> and like my bra and underwear I will post those I'm not ashamed those actually were cuter than any of the pictures of Wayne with the costume. <laughs> anyway, I digress. It was just a funny story. Super funny. Anyway, Halloween. Yeah, so um, that was why, you know, we were like, all right, let's do this thing. Let's have this party, you know. But my mom was totally susuing out, and it was adorable and, and whatever, but also terrifying. Nerve-wracking, yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> also terrifying. Um, and... This year, you know, we were like, okay, well, that's that's going to be one of our jams. It's definitely going to be an annual thing. Uh, TGHQ, Halloween party, whatever, in whatever form is always going to be a thing, I think, now. Yep. Uh, to memorialize the fact that for our very first Halloween, it was COVID and we couldn't do a damn thing. Yeah. So that's sad. Fine. So sad. But it's, you know, it's fully in the works now. Our house is, like, not under construction at the moment. Um, and... And probably won't be for a long, good long while. Yeah. Uh, and so now we can, like, we've been able to settle into it a little bit. The basement is fully a workshop now and also doubles as, like, an Airbnb, weirdly. If we ever do oh, decide yeah. to put a, a bathroom down there, it'll be its own thing. Although right oh. now it's really an Airbnb for the, the possums, so. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, well, yeah, we should, I, I should post pictures of the, the drapes I put down there. It honestly changes the whole vibe. It's really cool. For sure. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to say is even though that we didn't we didn't get to do the Halloweeny stuff with the neighbors and everything, we did end up having some really cool, um, like the, putting the treasure chest out there and having the creepy monkey head and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so we we have a um, a chimpanzee head, animatronic chimp head, which I don't remember if we talked about before, but um, we her have name not. is Zero. Has sorry, yeah. I ruined it. No, no, good. I was going to say, no, Zero has not come up in this podcast yet. Zero is a, uh, she's a creepy animatronic. I think she was supposed to be like a a missing link animatronic head from Sharper Image or something like that. But she looks like a chimp. So I I Halloweened her up. I cut off the top of her scalp and put like brain in there. I gave her cataract so she's really spooky. She's got sensors in her nose holes. So... Anybody that is near her, she will, like, focus on them and jabber and chitter and... <laughs> and it's creepy as hell, and I love it. Um, so she's, like, our sort of house ambassador. She was supposed to be used for my old zombie game that I never got to run. Uh, or rather, ran twice unsuccessfully. And now she is our, like, first roommate, I guess. So That's we, awesome. Right? So we put her in a... She currently lives in the closet. And we put her in a treasure box outside. And uh, so uh, there was one option for trick, one option for treat. So if it was treat, it was like, ha-ha, go to the other box. And in the box was her 
jabbering at you, and you had to reach in around her creepy face to get candy. And I kept on hearing kids scream any time she made noise, and it was the best ever. <laughs> Even though we couldn't interact, she was doing the job for us. And so, you know, last year we couldn't... I mean, we didn't have a website yet. We barely had social. Yeah. Uh, this year, we're opening it up a little bit more, so it's not just us, you know, bemusing our friends and family. Now it's going to be like, all right, cool, let's open it up to some more people that haven't been here before. Yeah. Also, you know, people are a little coming out of the woodwork a little bit more post-COVID, if yeah. you can call it that. So people are definitely less nervous about going to a party now than they were a year yep. ago. And Absolutely. so hopefully that will contribute. And in any way, there's going to be – there's a fire pit and stuff. So you can hang out outside safely. The garage is open. We have, like, an arcade in there. Yeah. So it's not like there aren't places to hang out where you can social distance if you're really worried about that. Right. But – um, we, we always have a setup for, like we, – we had COVID tests and masks and stuff out and ready for people if they wanted yeah. them as well. So Yeah, we did. We had hand sanitizer everywhere. We had masks everywhere. Yeah. So we try very hard to, like – make things as comfortable for as many people as possible right. apart from the fact that in this case you're walking into a house that you know where you know possums live yeah um, <laughs> they're gonna be the least diseased things around here man those things don't get any diseases it's crazy uh, i've been looking it up they they like they have such crazy resistances to any zoonotic diseases they don't get rabies they don't get anything so technically if you want to be safe you hang out with the possums word yep I mean, they are they are super. I mean, I haven't seen them since they were little, and they're not little anymore. Oh no, yeah, their cooter is a fat boy. He, <laughs> again, he, he he he. I made this little sling for them to crawl up into and sleep, like on the ceiling in the basement. And cooter got too fat for this, and he broke it and tumbled out onto the futon the other day. So I had to reinforce it for his his big old booty. Oh my god. Yeah, he's he's large and in charge, man. So, yeah, last year was ended up being a success. I have no idea how many people showed up because there's sort of a revolving door situation. And also there were like two or three different parties going on at the same time. Yep. So that was, which is always the case, kind of. Um, if you get to, if you get into the thematic stuff where we do something that is just about that, then it's a little bit more focused. But otherwise, you know, a general party, it's like, oh, we got arcade over here. We got old school console games over here. We have uh, board games over here. We have the TV set up with like a theater with projection and crazy stuff happening over here. That's right. We had Repo playing in the firm. We did. Um, so I, that's like kind of the standard for a party or gathering. Uh, upwards of, you know, like more than just two people coming over. <laughs> yeah, right. But, um, but then like, you know, one of the things that I, we really have been trying to pivot and showcase is not just the cosplay. Because, like, yeah, okay, it's fun. We have a good time with it. We love going to cons. But also, Mike invents games. Like, all kinds of games. And they're fun. His zombie one, I've been waiting to post about that. But we need to, we needed to explain exactly what we're talking about when we meet yeah. games. But, like, you know, he kind of gave a synopsis of the game that he ran last year. But most of the time, it's, like, immersive sort of... Uh, like scavenger hunt meets escape room meets LARPing yeah. and <laughs> based yeah. around a theme and a story, right? So it's not, you know, it's a story in the way that maybe you have a story with an escape room, but I've heard that those can be kind of lame and it's not like you get to be like a character or get to insert yourself in it. In that case, you're just like solving a puzzle. This is like puzzles plus character and LARPing plus like maybe nerf wars plus also all the all the other things so it's yeah. it's and it's and it varies by game but it it always is like people get caught by surprise you know it's always they always come in like i don't really do games and then like you know like even like Jesse and Ashley they're like they they yeah. have a roommate or they had a roommate at the time who constantly tries to get them to play board games 
and you know they get five or ten minutes into the you know him explaining the rules and they're just like oh my god stop no right. we don't want to do this anymore and like which we don't, i totally we, can understand we just, yeah can we just play sorry you know like or whatever yep. so everybody's got if you have a gamer friend and you're not you're not the gamer friend we know we know we see right. you you know right. we're not trying it's and that's the thing is it's not just games you know that he's making for gamer types where you have to be like yes i sit and play you know f- what is this like one of, one of those like eight hour nine full day yeah twi- twilight i'm period twilight yeah whatever yeah <laughs> on no the weekends the idea is to get everybody engaged and involved because i know everybody's got their own their own level of immersion right so that was what the the Game of Thrones game was all about. You could be like, let's play the goofy mini games, let's do the let's do the board game, let's just do the social aspect. Um, so like all these events are things that I always wanted to see out in the wild, but were never able to do. Uh, <laughs> oh God, what was the what was the dating place? The, nerds at Nerds at Heart. Yeah, it was what that's this is what I wanted Nerds at Heart to be. Well. Minus the dating thing. That was literally a... So that was a company that I worked for briefly, and then I brought Mike on to help me run events. But And it was a nerd dating group or, you know, event, and it happened monthly, usually at a bar or something like that. And it was just kind of like a a, a way to kind of focus energy and give people social lubricant around nerdy things. But it because you don't know the kind of nerd that's showing up, it was so generalized that we yeah. were like, well, it would be better if you made it focused events. So like if your only thing is Star Wars, then you're there for like it's a Star Wars event. If your only thing is Harry Potter, then it's a Harry Potter event. And we would yeah. kind of have themes, but like all of the the content around it was more general, so it could be anything. And it, everybody knows from like playing more... any trivia game ever, when you get yeah. that generalized, it doesn't matter how good you are at like knowing about XYZ. Like I just had this conversation at work yesterday with the historians in my company talking about like we're starting to do trivia at the company like once a month or something and they're like, Man, we suck at history trivia and we're historians. Everybody thinks we should be good at it, but like you focus in a certain area and then like it's hard to yeah. know everything. Yeah. And it's the same thing in the nerd universe, you know, like everybody's kind of got their little things that they are good at and remember and cling on to, but like you know, when it comes to the broader nerd sphere you know i i don't have anything to discuss with somebody that plays magic the gathering yeah you know like i don't i like cool you're also a nerd (laughs) excellent (laughs) you know like good on you man but like i don't we can't have a conversation about that absolutely and And in a a dating in a dating situation you know you double that down by people being socially awkward yeah yeah and then, th- and that, it, it always felt like their their themes that they came up with were more like academic based, as opposed to nerd dumb based, which is what I thought it was in the beginning. So uh, it, it it like it just a lot got lost in translation. And um, well, I, I think, think I think what happens there too is the people that are writing the content, which at the time was me. Like I was trying to follow the the brand of the company, right? So I'm trying to write yeah. within within what I know they they wanted the company to be but right. also you know like i'm limited i have to i have a, a certain time frame that i need to turn out this content in yeah. and it has to be on brand and i have to like now google all these fandoms that i am not in yeah. because i don't know anything about it you know so like i have to try to make witty references to stuff that i don't know anything about and that's unideal. Well, that's what I'm saying though. It's like when 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 I was working with you guys the the options that were given to us were never allowed to be specific fandomy stuff, you know? It was like, oh, a little literature nerd night. And I was like, that's really oh, that's broad. Oh, right. Okay. It was a lot Remember? of that. It was a like, lot of that. We had some cool ideas, like sort of the, didn't we have like a... It felt the, a little generationally out of touch. Yes. The like time traveler's ball thing was a cool idea, but that never really... We never got to, to do that in a cool way like we wanted to. Yeah. Well, and again, like, I don't think it's, I don't even think it's a critique of the company. Like, they were doing what they, what I think worked for them. Yeah. And it was like, I mean, they had, their their events were, you know, like, what, we didn't have any that were sad. You know what I mean? Like, they were all fine. But it, I think oh, yeah. as a nerd, you know, it's like, 
like right now I'm having this conversation about the new Lord of the Rings thing. If it's your thing and you really want it to be more, it's hard when it doesn't meet that expectation. Even if they're right. doing a good job, it's like not right. what I imagined it was going to be. Yeah. And which is not true for me with that specifically, just as a caveat. Like I actually think it's great, but anyway. Uh, but it's I think it's fine for what they were doing, but it wasn't it wasn't our brand. But that's exactly, you know, bringing it back full circle. That's exactly what we're talking about here right. is like, this is our brand. Right. Really Mike's brand. Like he is doing this stuff long before, after and in between me and him hanging out and doing stuff together. I just am able to, I'm the event, I'm the coordinator and, and he's the, the content. Like he's, he's the bulk of the content for this stuff. Uh, well, so I want to add something to that real quick, though. No matter what, whenever we're doing an event, like, I may have designed the rules and stuff, but you're always the star attraction, as I can attest to with all the pictures of you at the Game of Thrones event, looking baller as hell, walking in and engaging with everything. We do have a post of that up on our social media. That's on, like, it was in the last week or so, like, maybe last Saturday. Not this past one, but the one before that, we showcased... Uh, some pictures from that event if you're yeah. curious we literally stuck a tent out in like it was like a forest preserve it was the forest area. preserve yeah and uh people got into it. well at that time at that time game of thrones was a lot more palatable yeah let's and, so, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's not uh let's ditch the uh, the whole theme of game of yeah, thrones but well, the event was great i don't know i think we i think it's still salvageable but but anyway, no, yeah. you know, it would. But there was a lot more cosplayers and people that were LARPing as Game of Thrones stuff that were way willing to be involved in that, and that made yeah. it a cooler event because we you did have friends that showed up that were super in character, yeah. and like made it like it makes you buy in, and I think you do kind of sometimes need a ringer, and I'm always like, cool, I'll be that guy. Yeah, you absolutely are. You rolled in and got everybody engaged like immediately. It was perfect. <clears throat> but yeah, so I think in that regard, you know, we we've had some really cool, really the the biggest heartbreak of of the whole gaming thing is not having that zombie game work out. Yeah. Um, but I'm really still hoping we can bring that back. I think we can, we can do it. We can and we will do it. We will find a way. But but that brings us back to you, listeners. Uh, we need we need people. We need people that are willing to play test this stuff, to try it out, to give us a shot. And so, you know, this is going to be, I think, the first, you know, last year was just the kind of the, like I said, it's like a bookend. Like this is the beginning of the new chapter and the beginning of HQ yeah. and stuff like that. And we haven't been able to do a whole lot at HQ thus far because as stated, it's been under construction, lots has been going on. But this will be the Global first pandemic, real so. kind of like official is ish HQ event, yes. and we're hoping that we can like start really picking that up and running with it, and getting people to come out and check it out, and you know like if and it's not even like a marketing ploy. We're not trying to sell anything here. <laughs> no, yeah, it's we really just want just... people to be part of the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To and enjoy themselves being nerds and like have a safe spot to be a nerd. Right, right. And I mean, eventually, yeah, there are board games and stuff. I hope we get to finally market and sell. <laughs> but yeah. you know, then it's, it's just like cool if you're the board gamer type. Like, let's you know, please come play test our game. <laughs> yeah. We'll feed you. Uh, yeah, and the other part of that too is besides play testing, like collaborators are even better. Oh you yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, that's, and that's really it. What it comes down to is like, in order to make anything successful, you need feedback and you need people that are willing to like buy in, give it a shot, get into it, whatever. And so much of what we're basing the community around is not just like, how can we do the best cosplay of this thing? It's like, how can we, how can we create the best? How can we, and also how can we support each other in right. our respective endeavors, even if right. it's not your thing. So. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we literally were just talking about how, like, there was a generational gap with the nerd stuff that we were talking about on the the dating thing. It's not a generational gap that we have here. It's just that we have such a broad range of weirdos yeah. that, that we know that do all sorts of cool stuff. So we need to we need to be able to showcase more and more weird stuff that people don't get enough credit for. So that said, we 
our we I, by we really Mike <laughs> Mike this year is doing our now annual Halloween event and I, do you want to give them a teaser of what what they can what the game is this year Yes, so there's always going to be a spoiler aspect to the games I run because you just got to show up and enjoy the weird crap that happens. But the gist of it this year, I was going, I gave an option of either running the cultist game from last year, of running the zombie game, like the mini version of it that I did years and years ago. But what we came down to is the murder masquerade ball. So this year, the idea is uh, it's going to be another social aspect. You don't have to engage. Oh, that's another caveat, too. If you come to any of our events, you are not at all required or you know forced to be part of any of the gaming stuff or anything you don't want to do. It's very much pick it up and jump in if you want to. Um, uh, so this year, uh, there's anybody that shows up will be able to take a mask, like a masquerade mask of various types, and each mask is going to have an envelope. And in the envelope, you are going to have a roll. Um, so, unlike other social deduction games where it's just like, oh, this person is the sheriff, and then this person is the outlaw, da 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 These are going to be individual, unique roles. They'll have different objectives over the course of the night. And there will be murders and there will be sort of uh, ways of detecting who did the murders and other various stuff that goes around it but just know that anybody that gets a mask is going to have their own little set of rules and it's going to go it can't really go off the rails because the whole point is being off the rails in the first place but by the end of the night there's going to be some really interesting interactions there's going to be lighting and sound cues there's going to be uh displays that'll change over the course of the night and then it's going to be very sort of escape roomy slash murder mystery and that's all i can really say about it without giving up giving away too much and like the really cool and fun thing about this for this year is that Mike has been trying to do this for like 10 years. Like, I don't remember yeah. when, but we were just, you know, we were, we were discussing this before this episode. Uh, my friend Trinette threw a, um, what was it? Mardi, Mardi Gras, Gras party. Yeah, Mardi Gras party. And I happened to have a kit that was like a murder mystery kit, you know, like one of that those packaged really cool. ones. And it was like, you know, it was like hokey, but it was fun. It was fine for that situation. And I was like, all right, I, I want to use this stupid thing because I have it and somebody's got to use it. So finally, yeah. you know, like we went, we came, we decorated her apartment and we, we used that and it was fine. But Mike started to already plan this, this event that long ago. And I mean, like, God, that's when we all lived in Chicago, which now, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's got to be 10 years or something. It's like that. at least. Was I yeah. even with Tim? Yet? Like, it had to be after. It had to be I around the Nerds remember. of Heart time. Yeah, I don't It had remember. to be, like, about 10 years ago. It Yeah, so it's been a long, for a long time. He's He started to get this idea together. I don't remember you know, I think really it was probably me just railroading him as usual. <laughs> like, We're going to do this because I have this kit and I need to freaking use it. Um, I, I don't remember what the reason was, but yeah. I, I was th I was thrilled to do that murder mystery thing because I'd never done one yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, it was, it was, you know, it was hokey, but it was fine. It was great. The only problem I had is that I ended up being like a creepy old Southern racist character. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I this wasn't my choice and I didn't know it until like the very last scene when it was revealed to me oh my god anyway yeah so he you know 10 years ago he started this idea and and like I remember talking about it back then about the masks and all this stuff and at that time there was a lot more game invention going on and things have come and gone over the years but it's really cool to be able to be like, dude, that nugget was planted so long ago. That little that oh, little yeah. baby chicken nugget was in the ground and it had grown yep. and now it's a whole nugget tree. Like I <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole nugget tree. <laughs> I'm writing that down. Whole I'm gonna have to turn tree. the sound down on that one. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's it's cool for it to have come like full circle, full nugget, as you will. Full nugget. <laughs> and uh, and to be able to revisit that, I'm 
looking for I'm very much also looking forward to when that happens for all the other stuff he's been cooking up over years. <laughs> yeah. And anything I have that you know that that I that I run, I'll be able to put in the back pocket and just reproduce again. You know, give me a weekend and I'll set it up again. So the idea is for these things to be uh I guess sustaining sort of. Yeah. You know, like they'll be available when somebody wants it. When somebody's like, hey, let's play that giant board game you did that one time. I'd be like, okay. Yeah. Just set it up yeah. under a tent, you know? And I think, you know, like, so after after the event, I'm so, I'm so, so, so sad. I can't go. But after the event, um, we'll, we'll obviously we'll have pictures. We'll try to make sure, Mike, please make somebody take yeah, videos, yeah. short little no, clip no, no. videos, anything. Yep. And, uh, you know, we'll try to post that media so people can kind of get a glimpse as to, like, what this is like. Um, Really hoping that that will, you know, I don't know, raise the flag, raise the banner, shout the things, be the beacon for the people who are into that kind of thing, particularly those that are local to, you know, the Chicagoland area who are who would be like, yeah, I could totally get into doing a nerdy thing like that and and who want to check out the next one. But just like as a as a disclaimer, um, right now it's all kind of like word of mouth invitation. But yeah. if you are interested and it's your thing, you know, obviously we can't just like have everybody that we have never met before coming up in our shit. So, <laughs> so yeah. uh, we are going to have some kind of like a screening situation. Um and or, you know, eventually, like, probably not always host them at the house. So right. it's like if you know if you know somebody in the, the TG community and you want to be invited, cool. If you've gotten a token from us at one of our yes. Edipast event, that is a good way to get in the door. Um, and or if you, you know, if you're just like, man, this sounds really cool, I'm really interested – then shoot us an email or uh, like you can go on our website trashgoblinsinc.com and either use the contact form please subscribe and that's another thing yeah. I need to get on is our mailing list we haven't done yep. anything with it yet but I'm, that's going to change now we got promotions we got promotions we got yeah. <laughs> we got things coming up too for the holidays so be on the lookout for that uh, but definitely like subscribe to all the things and I'm not saying that because I'm like I want all the followers it's no 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 it's because we want it's you the- to be in touch with the community and we want you to know what's going on so if, right. if we aren't doing the thing that you're into right now that doesn't mean that we won't be doing the thing that you're into in five minutes so so yeah find us in all the places uh and you know all of that info will be in the show notes as per usual um and then and yeah like hopefully you guys will get to see after this we'll probably do a a debrief podcast about how everything went and and oh we'll have to yeah release all the pictures and all the other content from the event and let you guys check it out come to your own conclusions decide whether it's the thing that you'd be into or not uh or a thing you want to be involved in man we need help um yeah. we got we got <laughs> we we produce too much content and we don't like social media we would love it <laughs> if, <laughs> we would love it yeah. if somebody else would do this shit for us or help us out or, or at least just come and take pictures while we're busy you know so absolutely so be you know if you want to if it sounds interesting to you sounds like fun hit us up in any of the ways um but definitely in the meantime just just give us a follow give us a like we appreciate it tell your tell your friends yeah, if you if you subscribe or, or send us emails about anything, we gonna see it. So uh, honestly, let us know. Even if you just want to chat and say hi and connect with other weirdos, that's this is the place to do it. Yeah, I literally saw we got like I don't know, I saw a little ping on my phone that said that somebody looked at our website from Ireland. And I, lo- oh, yeah. I lost my shit. I was like, my great international. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really cool little milestone. I love that. I mean, they're not subscribers. So, you know, it's all right. but like, I'll take a visitor from my own. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's fantastic. All right. On that note, uh, looking forward to seeing how this goes, Mike. I can't wait to hear about it. I am so sad. I'm not going to be there. Oh, don't worry. It'll be around for you when you are out here. Yeah. Yep. And the rest of you, you know, listening, hanging out, somebody made you listen to this, I'm sorry. Maybe you're on a very long car drive. (laughs) Yeah. Somebody's like, I'm going to put on this podcast with these two weirdos. I don't even know what they're talking about. We see you. (laughs) 
Well, eventually we'll see you. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like I said. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Alright, my little dumpster bees. Bye. Bye. This has been a production of Yuck Mouth Media.